Hi everyone. Welcome to another practical chess position. In this position, it's white to move, and as always, pause your video, try to figure out what you would do, and then when you're done, unpause, and we'll work it out together. So this is from the book Imagination in Chess, as is written on the board. Again, these are always these are generally a little more tactical in nature. It's kind of kind of tricky to see what the big idea is, but I, I suppose that once I find it, the the puzzle will become easy. So we're on material here, but but it's not so easy to break through. You know, we're up the exchange. So what can we do about that? It's not so obvious. Hmm. Can Black's King can't move? Can Black's Knight move? The Knight can go to e8, g8 without without really losing the game. So what the heck do we do here? What kind of imaginative idea do I have that I'm missing? <clears throat> um, I have no idea. Wake up, Greg. <laughs> um. Huh. <clears throat> I just am not seeing it. I'm looking at ideas like if that knight ever moves to go rook takes h7, but I don't even think that works. Like, for example. Uh, like, f, uh, king takes f6, but and then with the idea of f7, but he can just go here. <clears throat> so that doesn't work, as far as I can tell. I mean, even that idea doesn't even work, is what I mean. <clears throat> so what the heck is our idea? Our bishop, we need to get our bishop somewhere. Let's look at all the dream squares for the bishop. Oh man, I can't find any squares that are like, so great for the bishop. You know what's interesting though? Okay. Uh, if we ever get the king to some square. <sighs> Hold on. Okay, like like let's say we walk the king. Well, see he can take on g4 maybe. Start with this move. It's kinda weird though. And, and basically my idea, let's just say we move back and forth. Uh, for whatever reason, stop my f pawn. Okay, obviously he would move the bishop out of the way. Let's just ignore that for a moment. Um, let's just keep. I mean, this looks really kind of silly, but like basically like this. Now, if we take the bishop again at stalemate, this position feels like it might be might be winning. Let's put the king here. And then, oh, it's not so easy to win, though, because there's always going to be some weird stalemate. Like, whenever we, whenever we push the f-pawn, it's some kind of annoying stalemate. <coughs> so, I don't know, man. It's tricky. Make sure I have the right position. Why, why am I having trouble? All right, let's just play... Just, I mean, bishop e2 is what I'd do, and just bring the king in, and then we have to figure out what to do from there. Because the problem is when we take the knight, there's always that stalemate stuff. Oh boy. No fair. Um, I'm just not seeing it exactly. Not quite seeing it. I mean, I know what I'd do in a game. I would just go bishop e2 and just try to, like, maneuver a little bit and then <laughs> hope to figure something out at that point. Um, you know, like, get the, get the king to eight, get the king somewhere. Um, I can't figure out where the king belongs. Like, if we're on e6.
I, I don't know. Maybe maybe what we do is like maneuver the king around. Okay, let's say you get this position, whatever, and then I come back here, and then I maybe. Jeez, I don't know. Like, <laughs> oh, some <sighs> doesn't seem like it's working so well. I was just trying to like do something like this, but even this doesn't work. So I'm just kind of having trouble figuring out uh, the idea, and it's it's been five minutes in. So usually at that point, I just give up. I mean, in a game, I would play Bishop E2 and try to figure something out, but. For now, I'm going to. I'm just going to look at the answer. All right, I'm gonna have to look in the back of the book because Houdini thinks every move is winning because you know waits up the exchange. Oh, duh. Yeah, well, see, this is why I would have won in the game. Would have figured this out. Basically, we just we maneuver. I mean, because it's the only thing we can do really. I went here. Uh, and, and the idea is we maneuver the king to f7. So let's say they just keep moving around. Yeah, whatever. Boom, boom. Ah, we'll save this move. Who knows? And, and now we just swing the rook around and go for some checkmate on the h file. So, you know, it's kind of like a long term plan. But I knew that somehow if we get the king in there, it's going to help. I just didn't see the end stage. But honestly, in a game, I would end up finding it. Because once your king's there, all right, you've improved your position to the maximum, then you find the best plan. I mean, that's a general idea in chess. You improve your position as much as possible. You don't have to see the force win right away. But always improving your position is a good idea. Almost always. <laughs> you know, so especially when your opponent has no counterplay. Like, we can just move move around at will. So I figure you just do that, and then maybe something will appear. Uh, rook, rook f8 was bad, maybe. It allowed king g7. But, you know, rook to the 7th somewhere, followed by king f7, followed by rook to the 1st or 2nd, followed by rook h2, checkmate. So that is the answer. Um, and it's very important to remember, like, what I'm saying here is you don't need to see... I mean, you don't need to see a force win right from the start. Uh, a lot of people, if they can't see it, they end up not improving their position. They're like, well, I don't know what to do at that point. But, you know, just do it, and then maybe something will appear. You know, just improve your position, and your chances almost always go up. So thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.